All right, the first step, or the first possibility to doing this is what's called the with key. Okay, the width key is a vertical bar, and it's this key right here. So it's the key right to the left of number seven. Okay, it kind of looks like an absolute value bar, okay, but it's not. Um, in order to evaluate using the width key, you would do the following. You would type your expression exactly as it is. Okay, so you type in 5x, this caret symbol right here above the division symbol is your to the power of button. Okay, so here's the way that you would enter this. So 5x, when you look at these calculators along this row above, a couple of rows above the numbers, x, y, z, t are there. Every other letter that you need to access can be accessed by hitting the alpha key and then choosing the letter that corresponds somewhere, one of the keys that has that particular letter. So if you take uh, five, or 5x quantity squared plus 2x minus 3, okay, you're going to type that expression. Once you're done typing that expression, you're going to follow it with the with key. Okay, so you're then going to type the with key, this vertical bar right below the equals. And then you're going to tell the calculator what you want x to be substituted in with. So you'll identify x is equal to, so the x again on the, the left side, equal to right below it. And then type in the number that you want to evaluate with. And when you do that, hit enter, it gives you your answer of 13. Okay, so that's one way that you can uh, evaluate an expression using your calculators. Okay. Now, the advantage to this is if I ask you to evaluate when x is negative 2, uh, when x is 17 and when x is 132. It makes it pretty easy because all you have to do now is just adjust those last two numbers. So you could evaluate for 17, you can evaluate for 132, and there's very minimal extra typing. It's already all stored there. You just have to change what you want x to be. Okay, so it's pretty efficient if that's the way that you're looking to approach it. Okay. There's another way that you can do this, and it's often more useful when you're evaluating a function. Okay. And that is you can convert this into a function. Okay. Now, you can still actually, let me kind of come back here real quick. You can still kind of treat this whole thing. If you wanted to solve, uh, or if you wanted to evaluate this as a y equals. So if it asks you find y when x is negative 2, 17, or 132, it doesn't matter whether you have y equals in the front or not. The only change is if I had typed y equals in this and hit enter, it's just going to tell me y equals, but it gives me the same number. Okay, so if you're going to treat this as a function, function means written in the following form. Does anybody remember, or you guys remember seeing this form, right? This is called function notation. So uh, it's easy to uh, evaluate um, a function. You can again use the with key. If you wanted, you could just type 2x minus 7 vertical bar x equals negative 5. Okay. Again, I know everybody here should be able to mentally calculate this. I just want to show you with a nice, easy example. Okay. But if you're going to treat this as a function, you can do the following. You're going to go into this Y editor. And the Y editor allows you to uh, write equations in this. And, and so the location for that is this uh, green diamond F1 key. So you're going to type in the green diamond key and then the F1 key. And that allows you to enter this uh, Y editor. And notice in the display here, it's y1 of x. It's already written in this f of x form, but instead of f function, 
you're dealing with y1, y2, y3, y4, and etc. Okay, but you're just going to type the equation exactly as it appears. So 2x minus 7 is entered into your equation. Hit enter, and now you see it's located in your y1 spot, the field for the y1. Okay, what that means is now anytime from your home screen, and you can get out of this by hitting this home button, the home button is going to take you right back to that main screen. Okay, so you've entered y1 is equal to, in this case, 2x minus 7. And now you can treat from this home screen just like this function notation. If we wanted to evaluate at this y1 function for negative 5, we're just going to type that in. So if we type y1, parentheses, negative 5, close the parentheses, and hit enter, we get our answer of negative 17, which again, you can confirm with a mental calculation that it's correct. And so you can treat this as a function. Now, if you wanted to evaluate again for, let's say, negative 2, 17, 132, just like the other one, you can just change your number in here, and it winds up adjusting it. It's nice and easy. Okay, the advantage to this method, by treating it as a function, is you can also graph this. And we'll talk about graphing stuff later, but by entering it into that Y editor, it allows us now to view the graph for that, and you can look at different properties of the graph and find different values associated with that graph. It also allows you what we'll do later as well is it allows you to evaluate a table, meaning if it asks you to find, uh, evaluate f of negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, and this whole string of real consistent different or uh, values with consistent differences, rather than entering it each time up here, you can type it into your y editor and then just scroll through. So here we can see when x is negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, and so on. We can find all those values in one screen rather than going through and, and changing it every time. And so that's when you might want to treat it as a function to evaluate.